All right, here it is, the Core Ice House Hybrid. This video I've got dialed in throughout the season this year. This is my ultimate ice camping setup, fully decked out. So as we step on into the house here, we've got our stove oven combo. We've got the microwave up above, front cubby cabinet closet, bathroom area. We've got the whole back area here. We got the TV. So this is just a high level overview of what we're looking at here. And we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna shut the front door here, but this is what we're looking at. Above the door, this is a, hanging rack this can move side to side if you want to so this is good for jackets gloves basically anything that you want to hang up dry out I had my fishnet hanging up there uh, in, in drying out dripping onto a rig on the floor too strapped and hanging from it I've got a Verizon home internet box so this is what I use for internet on the go one of the two solutions you can see today that I use for internet on the go and then behind it I've actually got command strips as well sometimes the command strips do break loose during transit and so what I do is I've got it hanging from there. So if they do break loose, it doesn't fall to the floor. And I've just got that plugged in through the cord, run the wire to hide it a little bit there into this top cabinet. And then inside of this top cabinet, I've got a lot of goodies in here. So this is where I keep like my paper, plastic cups, Ziplocs, that type of thing. But there's an outlet there. So I put an outlet uh, extender in, a couple USB ports, a couple other outlets all the way in the back here that you can maybe see right back there. I've got it plugged in. So I've got things that need power coming directly out of there. This shuts. So below the Verizon internet that I've got, I've got a couple of command strip hooks here. My goal here, you can see a lot of command strips because I didn't want to ruin the walls or anything, but I've got a couple different hooks here. Back here, I've got a couple smaller hooks that are great for hanging keys and whatnot. And then I've got two bigger ones here. You can see I've got my ATV and trailer keys and things hanging there. So I've got that. As we keep going across this wall here, what you're gonna see, we've got a GoPro mount. And so this is my top down slash look at me on the couch as I'm fishing mount. And so this is just a clamp mount. I got a GoPro Hero 12 angled down, USB cable running into that top cubby where I've got, again, that power outlet hooked up. Then we got the TV. The TV here is perfect for hooking up live scope to it with an HDMI cable, underwater camera. And then I've got a Google TV hooked up to it as well. So I get all my smart apps on here as well. So I can watch YouTube, Netflix, you name it I can watch it on here Hulu and that is what one of the reasons why I've got the internet box up there so that way I can stream while I'm out here on the ice what you're gonna see to the right of the TV is this guy here. It is a carbon monoxide detector. They do have one by the front heater cabinet. Uh, I always like having these ones because I trust them. I've got a couple of them. Uh, this is the one that I put on here on command strips. You don't really need this because it is a vented heater in here, but I always bring a backup buddy heater with me when I'm on these trips. And in case I needed to use it inside, I used it one trip in here, sitting on the floor there just to see how it would heat in here. And so that's why I have it in case I ever need that emergency emergency heat. I don't need to think about do I have a carbon monoxide detector with. I know that I do. On the core rail below the TV, you can see one of a few rod holders that I have in here. So this is a clam rod rack that I've just got mounted to one of their core rail backer board things. And it's got the Eagle clips on the back of it. So it clips onto the rail and you can move it around anywhere you want, which is nice because you don't need to mount pucks everywhere. You just mount your accessory onto one of those and then it slides anywhere that you want onto that rail system. So that's the first one that I've got. I'm trying to get where I just put the rods in here because they don't move. They don't move around during transit. You put them in there and they're good to go. So I've got that. I've got a rod holder. This is a catch cover rod holder. And you can see that one works perfectly above this hole. So this is typically either a jigging hole or a dead stick hole if at night I don't have any lines down right now because I'm filming. But that is what that rod and rod holder are for. Here is one of the new things that I purchased at one of the ice shows this year. You can see it is from Outfit edge.com. They've got a few different accessories for wheelhouses. I really like this. It is a table that is collapsible. Underneath it here, you can see that there's a, a bracket. If I were to lift this up, I could turn that and it folds down flat to the wall. What's great about that is I can then pull my ATV in, in here and not have that sitting in the way and I don't gotta pick it up and move it out of the way. But what I use this for, you can use it for whatever you want. It's a super sturdy table. I think it's got like a 20 pound capacity or something like that, but I mount a light to it. My primary camera, the one that I'm filming with right now, usually sits on there and points at me. So that way it's pointing back at the couch, which is where I'm usually sitting, fishing, all the different holes that I have right here. 
I also have a few accessories on it. I've got my line cutters on there. I've got a couple of toothpicks. These are different size toothpicks. I've got the remote lens cover, those types of things that I have on there. Usually I have like a portable battery pack or something plugged in as well. Moving down the core rail, what we've got here is this is a Rapala table. This is a collapsible table. So you've got a nice table here. This only holds, I'd say probably like four pounds maximum. Otherwise it starts to bend a little bit because it is plastic and it doesn't have reinforcement underneath it, but it can fold up. And then you've got actually a jig launch pad is what I call this, where you can actually shove jigs in there. I don't really understand why you would want jigs under there because when it's flat, then they're hanging down and may drop out. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe there's some other way to do it. But what's nice about it is I can put a pliers in here. I've got a knife that goes in there that's that I use. Fish grippers. I don't usually use fish grippers when I'm fishing, but I use them to hold things shut or open if needed or to clamp a couple things together. They're kind of great for that. And then if you ever needed to use it on a fish, you could. And then there's a rod holder here that I'm not using because I don't have that many rods with right now, but I just throw other accessories and things in there. So this is really great. You can see I actually have a jig inside of here. Flip it open. So if you have a couple extra jigs, you take them off, you're swapping around. It's kind of nice and there's a push to open thing. Again, all on core rail pucks. This is another one of the rod holders, just like before. This rod holder can be positioned anywhere on the rail. I've got it set to that back hole. So that's a dead stick on that back hole. Again, line's not down because I am filming. And then I've got another hole here. Finish the core rail, then we'll go back. All right, this is probably outside of this table here. Actually, everything on this core rail I use a ton, but I really, 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 really like this. So this is from Eskimo. Not, this video is not sponsored. I don't get paid by any of these companies. Nobody's asking me to make this video. This is because I just wanted to showcase how I use the Core Ice House for ice camping. So what you can see is this has a cup holder in it. It's got a tray in it and it's got two tool holders. So you could throw, if I wanted to throw a toothpick in here, I could do that. If I wanted to throw a pliers in here or another toothpick, you could absolutely do that. But this is great. And I do like even the detail of like, they put a little hole in there in case you have a wet jig in there and it will uh, leak out as well. You've got a, a phone holder. So you could actually lay your phone in there and this can be moved around again as well because it's on that puck all you got to do is lift it up this is like every accessory that they have you lift it up on the back there's an ego clip and then you can put it wherever you want it just clips right back onto that rail and it does not move during transit i can drive down the highway bumpy roads here nothing came off of this core rail nothing at all and it's really easy to put on and take off i usually throw a couple drinks on there or something and it's super sturdy like that thing could probably take 10 pounds then I've got a different rod rack. So this is one that I recently put in and I absolutely love this thing. So I've got five rod holder pieces on here. This is the Rapala back plate that's on there. Of course, attached to an accessory for the core rail, but these pop off and then you can put any accessory that you want on there. They make rod holders, rattle, you name it, they make it. But these are the things that you saw and they just clip on. And so what I did is I just put as many pucks as I could on that piece, which is five is what fits five rod holders. And then I can get five in that tight little space. If I flip to this back wall here, just finishing up the core rail, you can see how much longer the clam ones are, but it is nice for the extra spacing on it. So they're both good. So I've got in total three of these rod rack holders in here, four rod holder from clam, four rod holder from clam, five rod holder from Rapala. That gets me to be able to have 13 rods without a rod case in here. And they're all tight against the wall. So that way I can still pull my ATV in and not have any clearance issues on the sides, which is absolutely fantastic. And I can move them around wherever I want. It's not like a puck that I've screwed into the wall that I can't move around, which is awesome. All right, as we keep moving uh, back up to this top core rail, we've got extra accessories. So again, these are nice because you can put them kind of wherever you want. I hang them up here uh, if I don't need them. This is a cup holder, which I'll show you on the back wall, but that's just where I put that stuff up there. As we keep moving around the house, we've this is the back bunk bed. So the way that I use this back bunk, you can see here, you can typically have two additional beds in here. So I took them out, but there are bench seats that you can put here and a bench seat that you can put here at that dinette. So it makes it into a dinette table back there. I took those out because I'm so Solo camping. A lot of times I go solo ice camping, but if I wasn't uh, for day trips, you're going to see my day trip set up. I'll do a whole nother video on that. I typically use this for my bed and for fishing off of, so I don't need those extra seats and that frees up the core rail system behind it for accessories. So I take those out because I don't use them. I love that table because as you can see on the table here, what I've got is my laptop working station here. I've got a mouse. I've got the power cord going into a brick and an extension cord that runs all the way back behind the couch 
switch and into this outlet, which is the furthest outlet to the back of the house that they have right now, other than the one that's inside of this cabinet. So I run an extension cord back and it works out great. I've got on the table, just my camera gear bag. I've got cables in there. And then this is the second internet solution I'm testing right now. It does also run off of Verizon. It's called Nomad. It runs off of their C-band technology, which is supposed to work better in rural areas. I've had mixed results so far. I'll be doing a comparison video on which one gets you better remote internet, either the Nomad or Verizon's home internet solution. But right now they're panning out to be pretty comparable. So I use both. I like have my phone hooked up to that. And then I have the TV and or laptop hook up to the other one or something like that. Below the table, I've just got one of my tackle bags there, a stack of the catch cover, a uh, hole covers like what you see there, some rigs and things like that. But on the top bunk, what I've got is it's just storage. So I took the mattress pad out and I've got containers that fit up there, which fit perfectly from a clearance perspective. But what I've done differently, because I just leave all of this stuff up here. So my bedding's up here. I've got extra tackle up there. I've got accessories. I've got tons of things up here. What I did is I just use, I purchased this net. So this is like a truck bed net that goes over the top of your truck bed. And then I cut it down. I threw like three quarters of it away. I just use a quarter of it. Uh, that's as wide as it gets. And so I put that there. And then what comes with it are these straps. So these are supposed to be to tie it down to your truck. Well, I loop them around the edges and then into these holes and then onto the net itself to hold it tight on the sides. But it doesn't hold it tight enough to where things won't slide out. So what I did in order to fix that is I got these command strip hook things. I put one up here and then I tied one there so that way you can pull on this and it's not going anywhere. And then I did the same thing underneath. And so what you can see if I back up is that stuff's not going anywhere. It's tied up there. Uh, what's nice about that is I never have to touch it. I can go down the highway, bumpy roads, across the ice, over heaves. That stuff's not coming out of there, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's one of the things that, I, that I've got. I'll link everything that I talk about down below in the description in case you're looking to pick any of this stuff up or see what I got. I'll have the best prices linked down below. All right, I've also got two fans here. So these fans, I thought I would use a ton because the way that this ice house is built is that you've got your your heater. It's a forced air Truma Vario heat heater. Thermostats up here as well as one vent on this side and one vent up here. I thought I would have an issue getting heat back and so I need to push or pull air back. That didn't happen at all. So I don't barely ever use these except for if I have a hole somewhere in here that's freezing up, I can just blow the air down the hole, which I very rarely use. I think one in three trips I use it for a little bit just to unthaw a hole and that's it. The heat actually dissipates really nice. But what I did is I just grabbed these guys and threw it through. They've got these tie down things in order to hold the bed in place. And I just threw it right through there. So the, the front of it is in there. And then I've got a USB cable that runs around back up under the bed and over to where they've got a USB charger back here in the back. So I've got those fans on both sides of the bed. All right. Underneath what I added in, these are hog outdoor LED light strips. If I don't have these on here because of the bed, the way that the lighting is, is it's in the top channel. There's no lighting underneath this bed bed for the dinette. Uh, and since I do a lot of work under here on this table, what I did is I added two of those and I just, of course, command stripped to the bottom of the bed there. And then I've got the cord that runs down and it's on. Yep, that's right. I even got it on a dimmer switch. Uh, and what's great about their stuff is you can run it to 12 volt or you can run it to USB. So that's running off of USB, um, off of a cigarette lighter plug. And then this is where I've got both of the fans plugged in as well. So that way these fans are always plugged in and powered as well. Running off a 12 volt. If we now go to the back wall, so one of the core accessories that I really like, and I would actually pick up another one of these, is the basket. I don't know if they call it the basket or the shelf. Again, I'll link everything down below, but I use this for snacks and food. It works great. Nothing flies out of there during transit, and it stays up there really well. Again, you can move these from the top rail. You can put them on the bottom rail. You can put them wherever you want. I like it because there's all the space above that back bench uh, that's unused, so they don't have cabinets cabinets up there, which is fine because they've got the window there, which is great. But I think that works out really well. I'd get one more to throw next to it. And then this thing is actually completely underrated. I think you can buy these towel holders at Menards, but when it turns, 
it clicks, so it's not gonna free spool off. I've never had an issue with it spooling. You've got a pull on it, but it works on the core rail system too, so paper towels sit up there rather than on a counter or something like that. Nothing that I've really done up here in this cabinet. I've just got uh, batteries, so battery for the drill, a couple batteries for the auger are in there, a level in case I wanted to level this thing. Microwave, I've got a magnetic tool rack adapter thing here, put like scissors, knives, pizza cutters, those things on. And then above the stove here, what I've got is another command strip, hook strip. That's just kind of for accessories, other random stuff that I've thrown in there. Hand soap, hand wipes, alcohol pads, those types of things. And then stove, oven, nothing really fancy here that I've done. Uh, one thing that I will call out is I do store all my pots and pans inside of the stove. Definitely put foil in the middle on the bottom. It makes cleaning it super easy when you're done, but that's where I store my pots and pans when I'm out on the go, going down the road. When they're clean, they go in there, which works out great. Next to this cabinet, this is like your power center up front. A few things that I got going on. One, I've got an extension power strip there that plugs into there and I just let it sit up here. So this is where I've got extension cord going to the back, power cord if I need to running underneath here in order to charge the Garmin up. I've got USB port here. I've just got my USB-C to charge my phone. And then, yep, I've got a Google Chromecast here so that way I can do things like, hey Google, what time is the sun gonna set today? Today, the sun will set at 5.45 p.m. Just like that. You could set timers for cooking, lots of other cool things, play music, take phone calls, lots of cool things. Another reason why you want internet in here is so that that works. In the front corner by the front cabinet here above the panel, I just use these kind of as accessory holders. There is a charging port up here, both for USB, two USB ports, as well as a cigarette port. So I just charge random things in there, put gloves. I've got batteries in here. I just use like a little fishing tackle box for like double A's, triple A's, C batteries. That works really well. I've got the remote in here. I've got screwdrivers, flashlights, just a bunch of random stuff in these front cabinets, but you can use them for whatever you want. As we go down towards the floor, this is where I found the best spot to keep my boots. It's because it's kind of behind this front door and out of the way of the door to exit the house. I do have a rug in here. This is one that we had gotten bleach on uh, from our bathroom. And so it's a, it's a fishing rug now. So this is really good. It looks dirtier than it is just in the video here uh, but this works good just to get your boots get all as much of the water and stuff over the here as you can and then I usually use slippers inside we'll jump back to the holes as we go but I've got a line alarm here this is great for at night you throw your line on there so that way if something pulls your your line uh, you'll get woken up by this sound Yep, really loud. That battery's actually dying on that one. I've got my bump board here. This is the walleye bumper. So it's folded in half, 18 inches. It gets up to 36 inches. I love it. My favorite bump board. I actually have the musky bumper one as well, which is much bigger, but that one works good. Live scope sits here. Uh, it hooked up so I can do HDMI cord out straight up to the TV if I want as well. So that way we can watch the live scope on there as well as screen record. This is what I use for my waxies. This is what I use angle cooler right next to it for all of my bait minnows and then i use the angle aerator lithium aerator super quiet and it works awesome usb-c charging so if i wanted to charge i could red cup solo cup is what i use to fill the bait bucket so i have one of those sitting there a hand rag for when you get them slimy fish you gotta dry off your hand i've got the i've got the ice scoop in the back there to get the slush out of there we already talked about i just i just throw the catch cover tops here and some extra rags behind the table out of sight out of mind i could also throw it underneath this couch but i use it for for a couple other things. We already talked about my tackle bag and then this back corner hole is open too if I wanted to jig or anything like that. This bench stays open. This is perfect for two people fishing, one on this side, one on that side. You get the live scope in the middle and then you can jig fish either of these holes and then you can use those back two holes as dead sticks. I'm out here by myself. So what I typically do is live scope, jigging hole, and then one of these two is a dead stick hole. And then the other one is where I'll throw like my, my fish bag. So if I'm keeping fish, I'll be able to throw them in there so that they stay fresh as long as possible but cut them up and eat them underneath here is just storage so what i've got is slippers i always use slippers in here i've got my ultralight live scope set up i've got a cutting board in the back case of water my duffel bag i've got a drone back there but you can throw anything that you want under here as well all right back to the holes so a few different hole setups that i do so again line alarm i only use at night these things are a lifesaver so these are cats covers uh, i'll link them down below 
Polo. Uh, I don't have, these aren't the right hole sleeves uh, for, uh, these are like old school, like knockoff brand catch cover hole sleeves. But if you get the right hole sleeves for your house, these actually sit flush right down on the floor. And so that way there's nothing in your way and your line can go right through. These things are awesome. You can step on them. You can't break them. These things are phenomenal. So I use that all the time, 24 seven basically in here because you don't want anything going down the hole. Hole sleeves, I only use when I'm ice camping and only about 25% of the time. And the reason is this thing sits so low to the ice that if you don't have much snow or you haven't melted the ice enough these hole sleeves are actually too tall and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna sit up a little bit like this one you can see is sitting up back here because I'm that low to the ice and there's not much snow out here but uh, they are nice to keep the breeze out of there and keep your hole open so that's one setup that I have for holes that I use if we go to the next hole this is gonna show you a little bit of how I would do like a night setup so this is uh, the cat's cover again right on the top and it's locked in. You can see it is just sitting there and you can stand on that and it's not gonna break. But there is something special in here. It's from Undercover Guide. It's a relatively new product for them. And it's this steel band that you can just pop out and pop in if you want to. I've got it popped in there. So if you're not using a hole sleeve, like again, I don't do most of the time, you can actually put on here. This is, it just clips in there because there's a slot for it in the, in the uh, metal ring there, is this is a line alarm. Similar, it's actually the exact same thing as what I have up there, the blue thing. Thing, except this one is just a different color and it's mounted to their arm here. What that's gonna do for you is it allows you to just slide in here. That way it's underneath the hole cover. So that way at night, if you have dogs or little ones running around or even you, or you want it out of sight, out of the way, you won't worry about bumping it, falsely setting it off or anything like that. So it's great. What's really cool about Undercover Guide is say I caught a fish, all you have to do is flip it back and it's out of your way. You can pull it out of there too if you want to and then you can reset it back up. Like I said, they've got rattle reels. They've got ones that you can put a notch in your hole sleeve and then you can do that. But this is my favorite way to use it. All right. Another setup that I do is this guy right here. I actually just started using this sleeve on the outside of the sleeve this trip. So this is a regular hole sleeve that you can see here, except on the outside of it, what you've got is an insulated barrier here. This is made by a company called Bobber Buddy and it just slides around the outside of the hole sleeve itself and it's a little bit longer. So that way, what it does is it gives you a nice snug fit down there to help eliminate any extra draft from coming through. That was a hole I was having an issue with. I put that on, didn't have any more issues with it. But again, most of the time, this is more so what I'm gonna run with or something like this when I don't have that issue with it. This hole back here, what I do is I usually leave, especially if I'm out by myself, one hole not touched. This is a good fridge. This works great for drinks. So inside, I don't have a cooler or a fridge or anything. You can put your waters down there if you want to. You can put whatever you want in there and it's gonna stay nice and cold down on the ice. So when you're ready to grab it, drink it, you can do that and then you can just throw your catch cover back on top. All right, Garmin Live Scope Transducer. Whatever transducer you have, this is how I have it set up. So I've got one hole dedicated to it. I have the cat's cover on top of it, so that way I can step on it, do whatever I want. When I'm in the house like this set up, I'm not usually moving around too much, but if I want to, all I gotta do is pick it up. That slot on it is the perfect dimension to slide the transducer cable through. Uh, so I've got it on the ice tripod in here, and this is on the summit pole, so I can still turn turn it if I want to, but I, I don't need to. And then it goes right down the hole. And so what I do is I set it so that way you can see it's below, just below the surface of the floor. So that way this goes right over the top and we don't have any issues at all. This is the best way to do this. You can also then snake right next to it, an underwater camera. When I use an underwater camera, I'll use the same hole for it and then I'll set it up up here. So that way I can have live scope and underwater camera going. So sleeping arrangements, I sleep right here. So a couple things that are up here in that bag, I've got some pillows, I got some blankies up there. All I do is when I'm ready to go to bed, I grab those pillows and blankets, throw some pillows over here. I lay down there with a the blanket over me. That way I can watch TV. I can watch the live scope. I can jig my rod and I can watch my dead stick back there. It is absolutely phenomenal. I don't even fold this thing out. I just leave it up like that and it works great for me. Of course, you can lay this out and you could lay probably two people on there. That lays into a bed if you were to bring out the rest of the dinette pieces, which I will just leave at home because I want to be able to use both of these holes and I want to access the core rail system behind it. That goes down into a bed. And then of course this bunk, this comes down so that way you can use that as a bed too. So you could actually have three beds in here, but I just don't use 
choose it that way. All right, as we go back into the front cabinet, a few things that are kind of fancy that I've done in here. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. So there's the two cabinets up here. This is where I keep my food primarily in here. So I've got seasonings, food, meals, meal, like that kind of stuff, beef jerky, protein bars. And then the other one is where I've got things like hand lotion, because your hands get crazy dry out here. I've got ready wipes. I've got a spatula, trash bags. I've got cleaning wipes, cough drops, ibuprofen, you name it. So it's just like a good place for some cleaning supplies. Below that, these are command strip uh, holders of some sort. I use them for these bottles. This is some Dawn dish soap so I can clean dishes while I'm out here. And that's a bottle of 409. So all you gotta do is it just holds onto the trigger and hangs there. You'd think that they fly off. This, they don't fly off of there running across the ice down a bumpy highway, you name it, they stay there, which is kind of great. All right, this is actually pretty cool. So what I do to wash my hands and wash dishes is I've got one of these collapsible sinks. I'll link which one that I have. This thing works phenomenal and it sits perfectly right here on this table. If you're doing dishes or something like that, I would say you could just throw it right here on top of the stove and then put the container back there. But anywhere that you do it, you're gonna be good to go. So I use this. I've got two of these plastic containers with that I fill with water at home before I head up. And then this is a spout that's battery USB rechargeable. So I charge it and it like doesn't need to be charged the rest of the season. Just got this this year and it works phenomenal. So it's got a straw basically that goes down in the container. It's meant to be able to go on like bigger headed things, but it, it fits just fine and just kind of lean it on there. That's the way that I typically do it. And then you've got a power button, which is all that I use. And you can actually click a button to have it come out a specific amount or something like that. But what I do is you can see this is directly below it. If you want to wash your hands, you click that. You got water, you click it again, and it's going to go ahead and stop for you. And then you can just dump this outside or wherever it's just water in there. So that's my washing station, both for my hands, which again, I've got the soap right here so I can grab, or I've got dish soap up here if I wanna do dishes with a rag or something. That thing is awesome. Where I keep those is I keep them right up here in the front and I stack them up. So that way when I'm in transit, cause that this obviously has to come down when I'm moving, but that's really easy to do. I will again link this thing cause I have a feeling this is gonna be pretty popular. Uh, it's really cheap as well. I think it's like 15 or 20 bucks. So definitely get that if you don't have water in your system. Next to that, I've got a single cup Keurig coffee maker and then of course a mug next to it. So if I move the mug out of the way, what you're gonna see is this is command strip to this front wall. So if I pull back, you're gonna see three command strips on the wall and three here. This thing does not move at all during transit. So I take it off of here. I can plug it in to an outlet here. I've got outlets out front where I can plug it in to use it. But what I do is then you can put it back up against the wall. And if I'm quiet, you can hear. Boom, she's against the wall. She's not gonna move until I pull it back off. Doesn't matter, going down the road, stays out of the way. Uh, the mug obviously can't stay there. That's gonna need to get washed because I did use that already. All right, so if we look straight over from that cabinet, I had an additional core rail put in right here on this wall. And then I had another one put in down below. So that way you can see kind of coming out from that box there, I had another core rail system. The bottom core rail is just for the jacks, the jack stand holder thing to be able to have those out of the way. I didn't want them out here. And so what I did is I put them in here and that works great. And of course, if you have an auger holder, you can put that there. You can have your auger go in there as well. I just leave my auger in the back of my truck. I already told you that's where I keep my water. The top core rail, so how I have it set up. So I bought just like a hook from Menards. It's meant to go on a hooking system, but I mounted that to one of those backer plate things that hooks right onto the core rail. And then that's where I hang my jacket, my float suit, all of that stuff. Got another one of these, which is a drill holder. And so this drill, obviously it's a drill, but I've got the bit here. So that's what drives these jacks and it's off the floor and it's not taking up any cabinet space. This cabinet space in here is a little bit limited. Then I've got another hook here. I've got two bags hanging from it. One, which is filled with rags and another one that's like hats, gloves, bits, those types of things. And so that's what that wall on the inside to the right looks like. If you buy it stock from the factory as of today, there's nothing on that wall and it's kind of wasted space. Now I've got all of that space back from things that I need to put out here or in cabinets, which works out great. Below the front counter, what we've got is I leave this thing popped out here so that way I've got a hand towel so when I wash my hands or dishes I've got the hand towel there and of course when I'm driving I take it off inside of here 
I did swap out to lithium. So I've got 400 amp hours of life PO4 batteries. I've got a charger in here. I've got an inverter. This is a 3000 watt inverter. So like right now, this whole house, including AC power is all running off of four batteries. I've got two in here and then I've got two in here. So four 100 amp hour batteries. Amped Outdoors are the batteries that I love and, and trust. They've got uh, Bluetooth monitoring as well. So you can always see how much life you have left in them as well. I'll link that stuff that I'm using there down below as well. We keep moving over. So we've of course got this front jack. One thing that I like to do at night, uh, cause it's dark in here and I don't wanna turn all the lights on is the bathroom is in here, which we'll go through in a second. But this switch to the right is actually a light. That works perfect if you're coming in and you need to use the bathroom at night you can turn that on and turn it off. So it's like a nice little night light, kind of a cool little bonus that's built in just to the jack uh, that you probably otherwise wouldn't use. Above that, I've got a box of Kleenex, which is a great place for it. It doesn't slide out of there because there's a little bit of a lip here. Uh, so it stays in there and then some extra hats. And that's what we got. There's USB chargers and things here that I use to charge up like battery packs and whatnot. And then I just throw some extra like straps and things in here in case they're needed. All right, so into the bathroom and to the left, there's a few things that I've got. Of course, a nice little trash trash can with a trash bag, that's important. But then I've got a milk crate with a five gallon bucket in it. I double bag, this is the bat. This is the toilet. And so this is one of the toilet lids, trip tips. This is actually pretty nice. It's got a padded seat on it. So yeah, sometimes you gotta take a dump out on the ice. This is what I use for that. And then I've got extra bags, toilet paper and things down behind it. 